Back in the day, a technician would set the engine's timing with one of these, a timing light. A timing light would be used to set the initial and total timing. The technician would connect to the battery and this would go over the number one spark plug wire. The technician would turn the distributor to set the timing. The distributor was rotated to set the initial timing to run and the vacuum advance was typically disconnected. Once the initial timing was set, the distributor could adjust its timing using engine vacuum and weights that would be forced outward depending on the engine speed. But what about modern engines? Modern engines typically do not have distributors. Instead, they time the spark using the engine's position sensors for the crankshaft and camshaft. The ECM adjusts the timing using information like engine load, knock sensors, and many PIDs from a vast array of sensors on the vehicle. Some systems can fire the spark plug multiple times at lower engine speeds to ignite any remaining fuel and air in the cylinder. No matter if it's a distributor or a dedicated coil for every cylinder, the act of advancing or retarding the ignition timing has the same results. Advancing the engine timing can also enhance throttle response, making the engine more responsive to changes in throttle input. This is particularly noticeable at lower engine speeds. Advancing the timing can sometimes improve fuel efficiency, especially at moderate engine speeds and loads. It is also for more complete combustion of the air-fuel mixture, extracting more energy from each fuel charge. Retarding the timing can reduce the engine's power output. This is because the combustion of the air-fuel mixture starts later in the engine cycle, leading to less force exerted on the piston during the power stroke. Retarding the timing can sometimes improve fuel efficiency, particularly at high engine speeds or under certain operating conditions. This is because the delayed ignition allows for more complete combustion of the air-fuel mixture. Retarding the timing can sometimes improve fuel efficiency, particularly at high engine speeds or under certain operating conditions. This is because the delayed ignition allows for more complete combustion of the air-fuel mixture. Retarding the ignition timing can have a slight cooling effect on the engine because the combustion temperatures are reduced. This can be beneficial in certain high performance or high load situations where the engine temperature management is critical. Excessive retarding of the timing can lead to incomplete combustion, which can cause carbon buildup on the valves and the pistons, leading to increased wear and the potential damage to engine components. The ECM changes the timing very quickly. If you look at the PID for ignition timing, it will quickly change depending on the conditions. You can see wide swings that can advance or retard the engine timing as much as 50 degrees. Modern engines can also alter the timing to reduce emissions. By controlling the timing and fuel, the system can control the amounts of fuel and air to warm up the catalytic converter faster. How do spark plugs react to changes in timing? According to the engineers at NGK, advancing ignition timing by 10 degrees will cause the spark plug tip temperatures to increase by approximately 70 to 100 degrees Celsius. A colder heat ring spark plug may be necessary if the ignition timing has been advanced to near knock levels. Higher cylinder temperatures near the knock level will bring the spark plug firing end tip temperature closer to pre-ignition ranges. If the timing is too far retarded, it can also cause the engine to run cooler and possibly foul the plugs. This relationship between the timing and the temperature is why using the correct spark plug for the application is critical. Many high ignitability spark plugs are designed with constantly changing engine timing in mind and ways to control the temperature at the electrodes. I'm Andrew Markell, thank you very much.